In the last video, we built up a story map based on the results of a workshop. The story map we built consisted of multiple user activities, but only a single slice. As mentioned in the video, user activities in spec map can be linked to features, and user stories are represented by backlog items. These links mean you can use spec map to structure your backlog items visually. To link a user activity to a feature, open the user activities details and select the feature from the drop down list. Once a user activity is linked to a feature, adding a story to the activity on the story map automatically sets the user activity or feature as the story or backlog items parent. You can determine what happens if a user story is removed from a user activity. Delete link simply removes the parent child link. Don't change link keeps the old link, although the link will be overwritten if you assign the story to another activity linked to a feature. Replace link allows you to specify a link that should be entered in stories removed from the map. I'm going to go ahead and assign my user activities to the related features. If a user activity is linked to a feature, the feature's name is displayed in the user activities cell on the story map. Slices in spec map can be linked to iteration paths helping you to plan and prioritize your user stories. Adding a user story to the map automatically assigns that user story to the iteration linked to the slice the story is in. As with user activities, you can determine how a story's iteration path is handled if the story is removed from a slice. Reset to default resets the item's iteration path to the default setting. Don't change link retains the link to the iteration path. Replace link allows you to replace the link with a predefined link to an iteration path. The map created in the previous video already contains an implicit prioritization. The most important stories are at the top of the map. Those with a lower priority are lower down. These are the priorities that were decided during the workshop and I've decided to keep them in spec map. You can enter an estimate for each story to help you plan your iterations and the sum total is displayed in the slices summary. Based on the estimated effort, the user stories on our map cannot be completed in a single iteration. So we will need to decide which of our stories should be in the first iteration and which stories will need to wait for implementation later. To move some of the stories to a new iteration or slice, I can either add a new slice and drag the stories to that slice or I can split an existing slice into two, which is what I will do in this case. The blue dotted lines indicate where the slice can be split. Click on the line to split the slice. I now have two slices, but I want to split the last slice several times for a total of five slices. We now have five slices representing the five separate iterations. Let's give them all sensible names. Since slices represent iterations, I can link each slice to an iteration path in TFS. Choose the desired iteration path from the drop down list. The linked iteration path is displayed on the story map. In addition to splitting slices, you can also merge two slices. You can also split and merge user activities in much the same way. Creating a story map this way has also structured your TFS work items. Whenever you assign a user story to an activity on the story map, the product backlog items associated with the user story are automatically assigned to the feature linked to the user activity. You can see this structure in your product backlog. Now all that is left to do is implement the user stories in your project. 